In this video, we're going to learn how to use one of the design tools from a distributor. This particular distributor is Renvu. They're a distributor out of California. They have this really handy little tool that uh, you can use to design your system. You'll get pricing and the like. You just go to renvu.com, go into the plan and design, and the solar kit guide is all the way down here at the bottom. Now you will need to log into the system, create an account, if you want to see prices. You can play around with it a little bit without registering with them, but uh, you, won't, you won't get the full value of the tool. Now, the way you start, it's fairly common sense to walk through. We'll be here in the first uh, page. And for this particular exercise, this example, we're going to do a grid tied system. You could select off grid. You can also select the full system, or if you already have solar panels or you have your inverters, you can skip that. Now down below it's going to ask you what kind of inverter you would like to do. So just to make things complicated here, why don't we pick a string inverter system. Now bear in mind when they populate this with product, it's going to be the product that Renvu carries. And I'm sure that's the same with all of the various distributors. So your choices are going to be limited to what they stock. But you're using their tool for free, so heck, uh, you know, go ahead and take a look at their product. Now it's going to say, do you know the number of panels? So have you already designed this system? But this one will actually uh, help us out in our design of our system. And do you want to choose the brands and the products or do you want them to select it for you? I would say just select it yourself. So we'll say yes on that. And then we'll go to the next step. We can scroll back up here if we want or just click down where we were. So we go to the next step, and now it's going to ask us to pick a solar panel. Now at this point, we don't know what the prices are, so we're kind of uh, shooting in the dark here. Some inverters will not be compatible with certain sizes of panels, so you may want to do a little bit of research on that before you decide which one you're going to select. So in this case, I think we'll be pretty safe to say a 340 watt uh, 120 half cell. So why don't we pick Q cell? So we've now decided that panel. Now we could see the price over here, 243. So 243, that's going to be, I don't know what, 60, 60 some cents a watt. Uh, I could look at this one. It's 257, definitely a, a better price, uh, although... Uh, it may not be compatible with our inverter. So eh, I like the price. So let's pick this one and uh, see if there's anything else down here we need to look at. No. So let's move on to the next session section here. And it's going to ask us, OK, do you already know the number of panels and the system size? Well, we're going to say, nope, we don't. Um, so it's going to design that for us. So let's say our monthly bill is about $120 uh, a month. I want this to service 100% of my needs, and we're currently paying about 13 cents per kilowatt hour. Now, I'm going to pick a city. Uh, let's go down here and uh, pick one middle of the country. Let's say St. Louis, Missouri. Now, it's looked it up in PV watts, and we now see that it's 4.38. Now, I'm assuming they figure we've we've set this in an ideal condition you know the right angle and the right uh, azimuth so at this stage three point or four point three eight it's telling us we need 19 of these panels our system size is going to be 7220 watts so that's all right over here we'll take a look see if there's anything else nope so now let's move down to racking now it's going to ask us what kind of roof structure we're dealing with. We could say a flat roof, a carport, a ground mounted system, a pole mounted system, but we'll just go with a, a tilted roof, a fairly, fairly standard style roof there. Then it's going to ask what type of roof style. Uh, this is because the mounting um, footers and the like are going to be tailored for whatever it is that you have on the roof. This would be a asphalt shingle. Uh, this is Spanish tile. You get a lot of those out west. A metal roof system. Uh, flat tile. I'm assuming that again is a ceramic tile and not slate. So we'll just go ahead with, um, with the asphalt shingles. So we'll leave that there. And it's already calculated. I need 19 panels. Let's put them in two rows. 
one row is 10, one row is nine. I could change that if I want to here, and it has them as portrait orientation. We'll keep it as portrait orientation. I think uh, you'll have to know what the structure of your roof is. Then it's gonna ask what kind of racking system do we want? Well, they sell Iron Ridge and they sell Unirack and Unirack Railless. We'll go with Iron Ridge. Then the mounting hardware, we'll use the Iron Ridge mounts as opposed to the uh, quick, uh, quick mount. Uh, that's another brand, but we'll use that. The rail color is clear. What kind of clamp color? Well, our solar panels are black, so why don't we go with black clamps so that they don't show up very well. And then it's going to ask us, what is the span between our, our supports, between the footers? Oftentimes with these roofs, they're going to have uh, joists that are um, 16 inch on center or two foot on center. Well, in this case, let's assume that our roof is two foot on center and we want to put a, um, a footer every, every other uh, rafter. So four foot, that's what it's looking for, but I could put that in automatically if I wanted to. And then um, Iron Ridge has three different styles. Uh, I think it's heavy medium and light. Uh, I don't remember which one is which, so you'd have to look that up. But let's go with the uh, R100. We'll pick the one in the middle. I think we're safe. And then this is showing you a sketch of how these rails and racks, how this would all be oriented on your roof. And then it's giving you some information down there. And if you look on the left side over here, it's, pick, it's putting together a pricing list uh, and uh, an inventory of all the different products. So you're seeing all the lug bolts and, and the stoppers at the end and the clamps and the T-bolts and every little little bolt and nut that you're going to need for this racking system. We've selected our panels. Uh, it's building up a price list. It already calculated the size of the array, the number of panels, and we're getting a total down there. We're up to about $6,300 at this point, but we're going to go spend some more money because we need to pick an inverter. Now, in the beginning, I had picked that this was going to be a string inverter. The first thing it's going to ask is, do we want to add battery backup? Well, for this, for this uh, purpose of this demonstration, let's say no because then you get into some other issues that I don't want to address here just now. Then it's going to say, okay, is it single phase? Is it three phase 208? Or is it three phase 480? Well, this is a residential system, so it's going to be single phase. And then it gives us some choices of some inverters. They have Growatt, they have uh, Fimer, I guess that's pronounced, SMA, Fronius. And uh, we, could, we could plug some of those in um, just to see what the pricing would be over here. But if you've already got a strong opinion, let's say we're, we're big fans of Fronius, I could select that as my item. And then it's going to ask me, um, what is the minimum? Uh, what's the lowest temperature? So let's say it's minus 15 degrees Fahrenheit. And uh, St. Louis gets hot in the summer, I think. 100, 105. Won't let me go over 100. So let's just assume 100. And then they're going to say, well, you remember the size of the system. It was uh, 7,220 uh, watts. So this 7.6, pretty good. I could probably get by with the 6.0. Um, that's going to be at 120%. Um, and 125% um, of, the, of the rating, the inverter load ratio is pretty good. Um, so yeah, just for, for this demonstration, so let's pick that one. I think that would work well. It's not going to give us any room to expand this system. And I can look over here and that model is $1,878. Now, if I wanted to go with the more expensive, uh, the bigger one, I'm going to spend another 400 bucks, but it will give us the opportunity to, um, expand the system in the future. So let's say we're going to future proof. So we'll go with the 7.6. We're not using all its capability just yet, but, um, but let's go with it. Now, this is going to be on a rooftop of a residential. So we will need to do rapid shutdown. Um, every single system in an occupied building needs to have rapid shutdown. So I'm going to select yes. And it's giving us three different options of what we could pick. This is going to be a rapid shutdown. This is a rapid shutdown. So is this, although it looks like this one here gives us some communication 
options and um, optimizer. So the MPPT is going to be within that unit as well. Let's see if we can look over at the left here and see where the rapid shutdown. Uh, it's got the Tygo, 19 of them. It's going to be $836. So just to check, let's click on this one and see how that changes everything over there. Uh, Tygo 570. So I, my guess is that doesn't have communication within it. We could research that, but we'll go with the better one. That's the one they suggested anyway. Uh, do we want monitoring? Well, yes, of course we do. So I'm going to select yes. So we move on to the next step, which is the balance of systems. So you can check or uncheck various things, cables, connectors, wire clips. Do you need a disconnect, labels, tools for the system? Do we need any protective equipment? Do we want an EV charger or vent pipe relocator? Uh, we don't want any of those. These are all checked off. So we'll say yes. Um, and our inventory over here is indicating that we're already up to how much have we spent all the way down to the bottom about eleven thousand dollars on this system now it does uh helpfully give us a price per watt so we're spending about a dollar and 52 per watt just for the equipment so that's an all-in price on this particular system now, what if we decided um, if we wanted to play around with this, I could hit finish and it will give me a bill of materials. It will send an email to me with that quote. Uh, at that point, I suspect Renview is going to be after me to, um, to go ahead and order that thing. So I'm not going to hit finish just because I don't want to be uh, hassled by them at the moment. Not to say that that's bad, but I'm just doing this as a demonstration. I'm not going to buy these things. But let's say that I go in and I'm going to jump back to the start and I'm going to select a microinverter system. So remember that the cost per watt was about $1.52 if I remember right. Um, and it was a um, um, about $11,000. So I'm going to leave the rest, help me calculate. Do I want to choose the products? I sure do. And now let's move down. I'm, I'm just doing this to get a price comparison. Uh, between a string inverter and a microinverter. We had selected that panel, so let's stick with it. Uh, actually, no, don't want to stick with that because um, 380, well, I'll stick with it just, just for the heck of it. I'm, I'm being very indecisive here. Uh, you're going to see that it, it, uh, the microinverter may not be compatible there. I'm going to leave all of these the same st louis missouri so i'm still i have my system size it's still 7220 now i'm going to pick my racking well i'm going to leave all that the same it's going to be the same composite the same orientation so i move on there and now i'm going to select my microinverter well the microinverter uh remember we have a uh 390 uh, 380 watt solar panel. Now the end phase IQ8 uh, will operate at, I believe, does it say there? Um, I'm thinking that it's in the neighborhood of 290, um, going by memory there. So we may we may want to do the IQ8 plus. That seems to be what they cover. Uh, we could get some with multiple ports, the AP system where you can plug in multiple panels into the same inverter. But we're going to go with the IQ8 inverter. And it's telling me that the panel inverter power ratio is at 131%. It says the optimal is 125. So what that's telling me is that we've oversized our panel. That panel we selected early on is really too big. So let's jump back here. Instead of a 380, let's go ahead and pick this 340 watt panel. See if uh, if we can jump up. I think I got to go through the system here. We'll lay, go in here. And if I go to microinverter, if I keep the IQ 8, now it's telling me 117 percent uh, on the clipping ratio there so that's all good and i had mentioned before i don't want to put in battery backup let's see what it's done to our pricing structure 
here at the moment uh, we're at 13,000 so the price has gone up with microinverters um, of course now we're going to jump into the balance of systems I think that's all still populated in there I don't think the price is going to change here so our microinverter system using this is going to be about 13,000 our string inverter system was going to be about 11,000 we can then get a quote I'm gonna risk it here and hit finish and now what it's done is it's generated a listing it's showing you all the products um, some of the price increase might have been that because we went with the with the more expensive panels and of course also we're going with 21 of them instead of uh, 19 so I think that's gonna mess us up a little bit but you can see you can play around with these systems it's got all of the cables all the connectors you can remove products if you want once you've uh, set this up it has the monitoring system so anyway this is a nice tool if you want to go ahead and go in just go to Renvu set up an account and you can play around with it